couple months ago, uh, in uh, May or June, I think, uh, we had uh, in our little village, uh, village is called Shishatovac, and it's uh, here in uh, Fruška Gora. For those of you who don't know, Fruška Gora is a small uh, wannabe mountain here uh, between uh, Sava and uh, Danube rivers. Uh, and uh, it's basically just a little hillside. And uh, I think it was May, Sunday afternoon, we were doing some work uh, at the winery and somebody knocked at the door. Uh, I opened and there were two German guys standing at the door. One was older, the other one was a bit younger. And they said, uh, we are coming from Berlin and we found your winery on the web. We heard about you and we want to try your wines. I was like, look, uh, we haven't seen Germans in this village since 1945. <laughs> and last time they were here, they did not come to buy any wine. So uh, please, uh, please come in. Uh, they did try the wines. Uh, they even liked some of them. And they said, uh, we want to import your wines to uh, to Berlin. We import Serbian wines to Germany and uh, we like what you do. I said, look guys, uh, we only produce about 15,000 bottles a year. We have three hectares, it's very small, but if it's Berlin, uh, let's do this. <laughs> it's a good reason for me to go to Berlin. I've never been there. And really it's a, it's a cultural capital of Europe nowadays and uh, gastronomical as well. So it was a big compliment for us that something we do in this middle of nowhere uh, ends up in, uh, in, in Berlin. It took us a little while to get through the red tape of Serbian bureaucracy to export, but after a month or so we did. And uh, that's how we ended up exporting our, uh, our products to Berlin. And we were very proud of it that uh, we, can, uh, we, can, we can be in such a great market. And that was a major, major milestone for us. Uh, as I said, our winery is in the garage. That's why we're called Garagistas. Uh, Vin de Garage is a movement that uh, initially started in Bordeaux in the 80s. And uh, basically, owners of very really small plots of vineyards uh, organized and uh, made some really, really great wines uh, in, the, in the garage. Uh, then Robert Parker came. Uh, Robert Parker is a major name in the wine business. He rated their wines 100 out of 100 points. And, uh, and the rest is history. Those were Chateau Le Pan, uh, Chateau Tessier, uh, Valandro, and so on. You might, you might know some of them. And those wines are are now very expensive and they basically prove that you don't need to be a, uh, a big winery, uh, you don't need millions of euros or dollars to, to do something great, you can do it You can do it in the garage. With attention to detail, if you do everything by hand, if you do it with, with true passion and, and with your heart, you can make something and compete with the big guys and they proved it and somebody, uh, somebody did come and recognize that. So uh, nowadays, you have this whole uh, whole movement worldwide of garagistas, and and uh, one of those uh, is our little production, and uh, and I think uh, we can do something similar uh, now nowadays uh, here. Uh, and there I was in the 2004. When when uh, I came back from the from the states, uh, my my grandparents owned a, a small small cabin in in Froskogora, and they had an old an old vineyard. I was uh, looking to maybe do something that's that's not uh, finance because uh, I I I have a finance degree, and uh, finance degree in Serbia is. Uh, I don't know. You have a stock market in, in Belgrade that has a daily trading volume of uh, average hot dog stand in Wall Street. So uh, it's, it's, it's not very big. And then I said, look, what can I do? It has a small barriers of entry. It has a small capital investment. 
and what are my competitive advantages here? Uh, in Fruska Gora, we have a very good uh, terroir. We have a very good climate. We have a very good land and uh, very good history. Uh, Romans planted the uh, vineyards back in the in the good old days there, so they knew what they were doing. That was one idea. And also in Fruska Gora, you have a lot of these uh, monasteries, medieval monasteries and churches. And you know how the monks are. First, and church is the oldest corporation in the world. They do a proper due diligence before they do something. So I figured they, they found out where they can grow wine. That's where they will build the monasteries. Because if you want to talk to God, I mean, you need a lot of wine. <laughs> and uh, since there are a lot of monasteries, then I figured, look, if, if, if they can do this, maybe so can we. So uh, me and the three of my other friends, we started this, uh, this little, little winery. Uh, one of my uh, companions is from Gruzia, Georgia. One is from Macedonia, and uh, one guy is from Belgrade. So between the four of us, if we can sell it, we will probably drink it. And, uh, and there we went. And from there on, it's, it's been about 10 years. And uh, now we're in the, pretty much all the countries in the region. Uh, we, uh, we sell some, uh, some in Belgrade. And as I, as I said first, we also, have, uh, we also are present now in the uh, great city of Berlin. Uh, and uh, let me tell you, uh, even Shishatovat, you can hardly uh, find on the map. Uh, we don't even own, we don't have a website yet. But we have a Facebook page. I think websites are so 90s and uh, that's outdated. But Facebook page is a good thing. And uh, people do find us all, or through Google Maps or uh, they, they find us through Facebook. And uh, if, even if, if in such a middle of nowhere, I think you can, uh, you can accomplish something and sell it and sell it globally. Uh, internet has helped us a great deal. First of all, if you want to stay ahead of the curve, you need to have a proper education. Uh, we did exploit uh, Amazon books. I read quite a bit on uh, wine technology and, uh, and grape growing uh, through, uh, through Amazon books. You also have these online courses like edX and other platforms, biology, microbiology, and so on. It also uh, helped us with these extension courses. Uh, UC Davis, California, and uh, some other universities in, in, in the States have these uh, extension programs. You can do stuff online. So I pretty much used whatever I could to, uh, to learn from wherever I can. You even have some Russian sites that uh, illegally sell books for free, or I mean, distribute for free. So uh, that's one of the benefits of uh, doing stuff in Serbia, because those websites are uh, not blocked. Uh, also, in terms of marketing, uh, Facebook uh, and Instagram uh, are a big help. Otherwise, a lot of people, especially the younger crowd, would never hear about us and uh, would never know about us. Uh, now you have this thing with the uh, bitcoins, and uh, we plan to be the first winery that will accept bitcoins uh, when we sell our things online. And uh, also in terms of e-commerce, now there are quite a few e-commerce platforms that sell wines. In Serbia, it's still very small, but in uh, in the rest of the world, it's uh, it's bigger and bigger. And uh, I think in the UK. Uh, one company that does wine online sales sells their annual turnover is around 300 million pounds, which is quite significant. And whatever goes on in the UK or US will probably someday come here, even though you have a number of problems when it comes to red tape and bureaucracy. If you want to export from third markets to, to uh, Western Europe or the US. Uh, and there's really nothing more global than, than wine. Uh, 
in Chengdu or in Tokyo or in London or in the US, everybody knows what is a good Cabernet or what is good Merlot. And, uh, and it's, it's very easy to communicate. Wherever we go, we meet other winemakers. Uh, we're usually very good friends. And uh, if you get lost, just uh, find, uh, find the wine store and, and you'll find some, some, some good people there. So we're pre pretty much globally, uh, uh, globally connected. Uh, in, in probably another 50 years, we believe that the global food market uh, will democratize in a sense where small producers from around the world uh, will be uh, able to buy uh, these non-industrial foods from uh, everywhere such as uh, our small winery. Uh, and I strongly believe in this concept of technological determinism, which says that uh, it's, it's in, uh, patents and its inventions what determines how uh, societies develop. And that's, that's where we are today. Internet and air travel uh, will allow people who want to buy uh, these non-industrial foods uh, handmade, uh, uh, handcrafted uh, from small productions uh, to be able to obtain those in, in big cities and getting products to the market from, from villages around the world will be made available. Uh, maybe not so much for now, but uh, that's, that's coming to be and I think it will also be able here. Throughout Europe, it's, it's already possible. So if... Uh, if you want to start a, a small business such as we did, and even if, if you produce wine or food or, or, or anything, uh, you can do it in a, in a small village because uh, there is a so-called uh, curve of diminishing returns. The more you invest, at some point, it doesn't matter anymore because for every additional dollar, you will not improve quality. In, in wine, that's how it is. Uh, for the, you need maybe the first 50 or 100,000 euros for the vineyard and for the garage and for the equipment and so on. But at some point, those big corporations, they have millions and zillions of dollars. Every additional million they invest does not mean they can produce stuff that's higher quality or better than, than, the, than the stuff you made, even, even the, the country. And their economies of scale in terms of uh, food production mean very little. Uh, and I think segmentation will come, uh, in, especially in the food business, where you will have uh, people who nowadays have a lot of money and are health conscious. They want to know what they eat, where it came from, who grew it, how they grew it. And you will have a population, which is probably majority, that will be maybe less uh, wealthy, but they will uh, be interested only in pricing. So uh, that's, that's, uh, that's a global trend, I think. And, and whoever does anything to do with food needs to, uh, needs to take a look at it. Uh, for now, our, our story is, uh, is a semi-success. And I think, uh, as, as uh, Steve Jobs said, uh, stay hungry, which I always am. Uh, and uh, in, in Serbia, that's uh, very possible. We, we can uh, always do business that has, uh, needs no electricity and the uh, human factor is minimal because in agriculture, you grow something, you pick it, and all you have to do is just to make sure that you don't mess it up. Nature uh, pretty much did the, did the job. So uh, when, you, when you think of it as a competitive advantage, not a disadvantage, I think uh, uh, we, can, we can do a lot of great things and put these little uh, villages that we live in on, on some uh, global map of uh, winemaking or, or a lot of my friends do other things. Uh, they make cheese, they make other, other great stuff. And uh, with, the, with the technology today and all these uh, tools that, that now exist that I mentioned, 
uh, I think it's it's possible to uh, to compete even with these uh, big uh, big corporate businesses, and uh, I encourage everyone who has uh, any idea to leave the big city and uh, maybe do something smart with their lives to 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 follow in our in our steps. Thank you.